the ongoing debate of live rock versus dry rock continues. <laughs> okay, I said in my last video that I was gonna introduce some parts of some live rock. I was gonna do a mixture of live rock and dry rock, and dry rock together, but when I was um, investigating this rock, I seen one big piece of Aptasia on the rock. Also, I saw some kind of crab, a hitchhiker, <laughs> that was on the rock. So, that made me second guess about live rock. I, I mean, Live rock is nice, but what you get with it could be bad, could be good for the thing, and I just don't want to risk putting bad, bad parasites or Aptasia into my tank when it's new. So for right now, I'm going to do 100% dry rock. Yep, I was gonna do the mixture of both, but after after seeing some crabs and stuff on on this rock, I do like the coralline algae that's encrusting and stuff like that. But I just don't want to risk any anything bad in this team, especially when you're starting out new. That's just a disaster, and if I put it in. Oh man, this, this tank is very deep. So, I, and if I if I do my rock work and I put I, if I put all my rock work together, it's gonna be a pain taking the reef apart and doing all that. Plus, uh, with dry rock, is it's dry, no no parasites or anything. So um, that's a big plus for me. I don't have to worry about any of that bad stuff. What I will be using to cycle the tank though is this Dr. Tim's one and only bacteria in a bottle. So to get the tank cycle with this dry rock over here. So yep, that's my plan so far.